Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Retro Tech. Yes, Retro Tech, where we aim to bring you the best of the vintage test gear, electronic equipment, ooh, from days gone by. Today we're looking at the Dynascan BK Precision 2806 digital multimeter. This came out circa 1984. Um, Pretty advanced at the time, 2000 counts. It had a auto slash manual ranging capability. And of course that selector switch look is all manual ranging, which at that time was really pretty advanced. If you're not familiar with the Dynascan name, it was created way back in 1961 from Carl Korn from BNK Precision. He created the Umbrella Corporation known as Dynascan. So yes, been around in the electronics biz for quite some time. This is a really sweet multimeter. One of my favorites. Oh my god, they're all my favorites. What am I talking about? Uh, this one just for me hits a lot of the, 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 the nail on the proverbial head. I mean, it starts off with, you know, what they gave you back in the day in the box. If I can get the box open. Um, let's see. And now this is all the original stuff that came with this. So we have a BNK Precision. Um, factory authorized parts list. So if you needed service back then, here is the list of locations. Uh, these are all in, in the United States that you could get your Dynascan serviced. And of course, of course, and I keep saying of course, but yeah, of course, look at that. Dynascan, 1983. And what is it? It is a parts list, a parts list. Oh my goodness, look at that. So every single part, every single through hole component, and yes, oh, oh my gosh. I just shudder when I see this, a schematic, a full size schematic of the multimeter itself, like incredible. I mean, I mean, this is, this is what I mean when you talk about, you know, the good old days. Well, no freaking kidding, right? Um, look, a full page schematic, so you need to do some troubleshooting. Here you go. All of the uh, components on the, uh, the multimeter itself and all of the uh, parts. I mean, if you have to replace them, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. Incredible. So, wow. Wow. And yes, of course, we do get our instruction manual as well. They weren't messing around, B&K. We're not messing around. And this is a pretty sweet manual once again. Uh, fold out style and look at that nice big verbose really small print actually uh, but t tells you everything you need to know about this meter and it's double sided as well um, yeah so nice attention to detail being K and of course what would a multimeter be without test leads well it would be a multimeter without test leads anyway you get the idea yes it just wouldn't be the same would it no so here are the original BK Dynascan test leads that came with this meter. Um, they don't have any branding on them per se. Kind of a hard plastic, not really sharp. Um, and in terms of length, they are fairly long, just your standard PVC. And the tip's a little bit different, that kind of banana style plug here. So those would just fit onto the meter like so. Um, and it was in there actually quite, quite well, but uh, yeah. Hey, check it out. We have some optional accessories with this unit. We have the carrying case and an RF detector probe, a high voltage multiplier probe, a temperature probe, thermocouple, component fixture, and a replacement test lead set. So those were all extras you could get. It comes with a spare fuse and the test leads and the schematic and the parts list. So, wow. Woo. Now this retailed for about a hundred bucks US, maybe a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of standards, it really wasn't cheap. A hundred US, uh, you know, 35, 40 years ago was not cheap. So not a cheap multimeter. This multimeter has a tilt stand as well, which is nice and a nice rubber inlay. So you have a really good solid foundation for this meter. I love this style. I mean, this is just so classic digital multimeter, isn't it? Just that square. Mm, I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it. We have some nice little grippy texture sides here going on. But I mean, just generally really, really a sweet meter. Oh, don't mind that. That's just me. This is how I catalog some of my meters, but yeah. So 
access to the battery compartment. There we are, two AA batteries, and we do have that spare milliamp fuse here. Now, to get to the high current fuse, which this also has, you have to take the whole thing apart. So three Phillips has to be removed to get to that high current fuse. So, yeah, that's okay. It was 1983, 84, come on. Now, BK really loved that beige. Hey, everybody loved beige back in the 80s. Oh my gosh, remember those PCs? Whoa, seems like a bygone era. Well, it is, but anyway. Um, here's another classic that I reviewed a while back on the channel, that uh, BK Precision 2800. Beautiful again. Now, this was a Bakelite, Bakelite, and this is just your standard plastic. So, um, a little more modern, a little more hip, so to speak. But uh, yeah, that color combo just is really beige. Okay, well, almost 40 years later, and it's still in spec. 5.05 volts, 5.00 is what we want. Oh, sweet. So they had the color coding on the inputs back then, which was really nice to step up. Hey, today, 40 years later, sometimes you don't get the red and black color coding, you know? So they were thinking, good stuff. And a separate high current input, which very, very important and awesome to see. And now we have that milliamp input shared with the resistance and the diode. Can't say I'm a big fan of that, but there you go. Now something else, a little unusual too, was the fact you had that auto and manual. So this was an auto ranging meter, but if for whatever reason you wanted to trickle down manual way, uh, lane, hit the button and you're now in manual mode. So manual mode, hit it again, hold down on it. There we go, it takes it off the manual mode. So yeah, interesting. And one now the display itself as well, it's clear, it's contrasty, but it's not the greatest looking, let's face it. Uh, small and yeah, it's only 2000 count, but oh yeah, it's just not, not that easy to see. Um, but you know what? It doesn't have any defects. Now I purchased this new old stock. So uh, basically unused 40 years later or 35 years. Um, I bought it about five years ago. And if you can tell, it's got that little plastic here. That's a slight plastic film all along the top and you know what i'm gonna leave it on i'm gonna leave it on because well i don't want to take it off but no film no plastic anything on that display that is just the way it looks yeah kind of dark hmm ho hum have that dynascan hooked up right now to the power supply sitting at 4.8 amps coming up as 4.91 pretty darn close let's just take it to the threshold So just over 10 amps, coming up as 10.2 amps, not even breaking a sweat. Now, of course, hey, 40 years old, no high current alarm, nothing like that. Just doing its job and nothing else. Bring it back down. Whoa, those leads are getting warm. And uh, yeah, there we go. So, hey, beauty. Taking a quick look at the inside of this gorgeous 2806 classic from Dynascan BK Precision. Oh yes, I love looking at these old meters. Whoa, um, turn it around. Who thinks we have shielding? Anybody want to put money on it? Come on, come on, don't be shy. Yeah, you got it. Of course it has shielding. All these beautiful vintage meters had shielding. They knew what they were doing back in the day. Man, and that is a nice bit of shielding as well. Look at that, excellent excellent protection basically you're creating that uh, faraday cage as they like to and call yeah, it look at that a huge busman fuse on that 10 amp uh, current input circuit beautiful absolutely gorgeous and my oh my it looks like we have a uh, variable trim pot over here vr3 i'm not sure if that's for the voltage or possibly resistance um oh yeah look at those big blobs of solder everywhere there's a gorgeous selector switch Man, oh man, oh, I love there's our on-off rocker switch over here, and look at that IC, M5230, that is the brains behind this 2806. There's the 2000 count LCD di digital display over here with a couple big, huge solder blobs um, on either side. Oh yeah, side. that nice big selector switch, oh, check it out, beauty. And if you notice over here, that is a mother-daughter board, so to speak. So two PCBs are ma making a, a complete unit. Uh, one of them is strictly for those inputs. 
So a separate PCB all together. You can tell it's just screwed in there with those brass inserts. And that's what a lot of those third party wires are connecting. Hey, wow. isn't that a booyah? Opposite side, once again, more shielding. Gorgeous, so complete Faraday cage here by the BK Dynascan people. Um, no interference from external sources will be affecting this meter reading. That's for darn sure. Oh yes, beautiful. It just keeps getting better, doesn't it? Look at the size of that current shunt. Absolutely giganormous. Whoa, that is thick and ready for some current action. Those solid input jacks, opposite side, great use of the solder, uh, really nice. Boy, this is a spaghetti. Freddy kind of a setup um, a lot of external wires going on here I'm kind of glad we don't see that in today's meters that's for sure but uh, then again the PCB that they were using back then obviously this is all through hole stuff so you don't have that nice uh, circuit tracing that you get nowadays with uh, today's modern PCBs but wow that is a real spaghetti factory there of course is the selector switch over here and man, there's more trim pots as well. Wow, one, two, three, four more trim pots. So lots of user calibration available here with this Dynascan. And at the top, we have another PTC high powered resistor as well. And it looks like we have a diode clamp over here going on. So input protection seems pretty good. And don't forget, this is a uh, high current reading meter. So they weren't messing around back then. At the very top, yeah, another glass fuse. Uh, that's a 500 milliamp glass fuse. Definitely not as robust as that gorgeous busman we saw uh, for the high current. But nonetheless, there it is. And as well, we have our battery terminals over here at the battery housing. All in all, quite a beautiful looking vintage PC. Hope you enjoyed this vintage sojourn down memory lane. You, me, and the BK Precision 2806. 40 years later and still going strong.